Okay. Hey there, my name is uh, Steve Richards. Uh, I'm 29 years old. I was uh, diagnosed with aortic stenosis when I was born. Um, so I had a, a heart murmur and it was something that was constantly watched uh, from the moment I was born um, for my entire life. So I would go to see a cardiologist uh, at least once a year. Uh, when I was little, it was every six months uh, just to check on the condition of the valve and things like that. Um, I was pretty active growing up uh, as a kid, loved to play street hockey, baseball, football, you name it. I probably played it uh, and lived a, a pretty, you know, normal child, normal childhood, normal life. Um, that was good. Uh, all the way up until I was a senior in high school. Uh, so I was about 17, 18 years old. Uh, it was a week before uh, graduation. We were playing dodgeball. Uh, of course, I got a little bit too too into it, I think. Uh, and I got in the car uh, after that to drive home. And I just started feeling uh, very, uh, a lot of tightness in my chest, a lot of pain. I started sweating, uh, really had a lot of trouble uh, breathing. Uh, truthfully, I probably should have pulled my car over uh, and called an ambulance, but I just drove myself down to the down to the hospital because I knew that something wasn't right. Um, so I called my family, let them know uh, to meet me down there. And they started to, uh, they just wanted to run some tests to see what was going on. They put in a, an IV uh, and then they started to draw blood and I uh, immediately flatlined uh, for about 50 seconds. So uh, what they determined that one or what it's called was a, a vasovagal reaction, but they were very concerned. Uh, I woke up after 50 seconds um, and saw about five doctors standing around my head. Uh, and I was like, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> and they all kind of looked at each other and said, oh, okay, uh, let's keep running some tests. Let's see what's going on. So uh, what they found was um, the stenosis had really progressed uh, r quite rapidly uh, since my last checkup. And they, were they said you need to have surgery almost immediately uh so tomorrow the next day and you you need to have your your valve replaced well um i wasn't going to miss out on walking for graduation so i said i will gut it out um for the next week uh i did walk to graduation with my twin sister uh it was great and all my friends and uh the next day i was at the cleveland clinic uh ready to get my valve replaced. So what they decided to do for that surgery was uh, they replaced it with a bovine pig valve, um, which at the time, this would have been in 2010, uh, the research would show then that that was a viable option. As I continue this story, uh, you may find um, that wasn't so much the case, and it certainly isn't the case now when this is being recorded in 2021. So um, I was obviously a lot, there were a lot of emotions going on there at the time. Um, you know, like I was going ready to go to Penn state, uh, for college in three months. And they're like, Oh yeah, you're good. You know, um, no worries. You'll be all recovered. You'll be fine. So take a step back to the, you know, the day of, uh, the surgery, it was really scared because again, this was very, very sudden. I was pretty much healthy. Um, or at least I thought I was, uh, up until basically, you know, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I didn't really have a lot of time to process what was going to happen. I just kind of listened to the doctors and said, yeah, let's, you know, let's do this. Um, and so went through the anesthesia, um, had the surgery. And I will say um, it was really traumatic. So when I got out of the surgery, um, it was very intense. Um, to this day, uh, without a doubt, the most painful thing that I've ever gone through uh, from a physical pain standpoint, even though it was a minimally invasive uh, procedure, it was just extremely painful. Um, and I actually was having a lot of trouble uh, breathing. So for the first three to four days of recovery, um, I had no strength. I couldn't even walk down the hallway. Um, and it was just very, very uh, difficult uh, and proceeded to be difficult for honestly the next two and a half to three months um, from a pain perspective and honestly from a mental perspective because 
as each day went by, I didn't really feel like I was progressing because I was still in pain, still didn't really have energy. Um, and I'm a person that is very uh, social, very active, and I was locked in my room. Uh, so from a mental standpoint, uh, it was very difficult and also kind of flashing back and thinking about being in the hospital, the surgeries, it was just very uh, traumatic. And um, also I will say uh, the painkillers, I think really messed with my head as well. They had me on the strongest uh, that you can be on. I can't remember what it is now, but it was, wasn't fentanyl, it was whatever's above that in the hospital. Then they weaned me down, but I was still taking opioids, uh, a lot of them by the time I got home. Uh, and I think that also really uh, negatively impacted my uh, mental health. Um, knowing what I know now and looking back at it, uh, it was really, really challenging. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, so I'll kind of continue on. Uh, I did start college, uh, the next three months, like I mentioned earlier, three months after that, a uh, huge mistake, <laughs> to be honest, I was so looking forward to, uh, the college experience. So I didn't want to, you know, move it or change it or anything like that. Um, but Honestly, I had no, I still just didn't have any energy. Um, and I tried to just push through it. Um, and again, that was just the wrong decision. And I only lasted a year through college. And then I basically, uh, I wasn't able to make it to a lot of my classes. So I, um, yeah, I made it through a year and that was it. And then I was really depressed after that because not only was I, I thought I was a failure, I, I thought I, um, you know, what's still wrong with me? Like, why don't I have the energy that I normally, you know, used to have what's going on, uh, and was really depressed. Uh, that really messed with me for the next probably six months after that. And I finally went back to my cardiologist because I was experiencing more symptoms. I was getting lightheaded. It was, they were getting pretty aggressive, uh, and the stenosis had, uh, returned. So this is only about a year later. Um, that they said, you know, yeah, uh, this is, you're right, basically, yeah, it, uh, your symptoms are what you think they are, you're going to have to have your, we're gonna have to do another surgery, because this first one did not work. Uh, I will tell you, that was the, probably the scariest thing that I've ever heard uh, in my entire life. So, um, just because of the, how traumatic the, the first one was, as well as, you know, what are my options this time around? At the time, again, I was only about 19 uh, years old. And I'm like, okay, uh, great. So I'm going to have to go through this all over again. Um, and it was really, it was a challenge. Uh, I actually, when they first told me that, uh, I actually said no. Uh, I said, I, I can't. I can't do it. Uh, honestly, I can't do it again. I can't put myself through that. And luckily, I had a, a good support system around me that I'm very thankful for uh, that, that changed my mind. But my gut reaction was, no, I, I can't go through that again. No way. Um, but they, they, the doctors, uh, my family, you know, kind of convinced me, hey, uh, you have to. <laughs> there is no other choice. Um, so what we ended up doing or deciding on, there were two options or two surgical options. It would have, was either a mechanical valve, um, which would mean I would go on blood thinners at 19 and be on them the rest of my life. Uh, or um, there's a procedure called the Ross procedure. And what that is, is they take your uh, pulmonary valve, they move it to your aortic valve, and then they take a uh, human cadaver um, pulmonary valve and replace that. Uh, it's a fairly risky surgery. Um, there's a 70% mortality rate attached to that. So 30% chance that I wouldn't see through to the other side. However, uh, I had a lot of confidence in the uh, surgeon, uh, Gosta Pedersen at the uh, Cleveland Clinic, had a lot of uh, confidence in him. And he really pushed me towards that option and said, listen, if this works, you will basically be living a normal life and hope it lasts a good 20 to 25 years and hope by then there's potentially another option, which already there actually is. So in hindsight, great decision. Uh, but from a mental perspective, it was, again, very, very challenging uh, trying to um, accept the fact that the first, that I'm, I was going to have to go through this process again. Um, and like I said, my support system was, was great, uh, and I'm very thankful for that. However, um, it, it was very draining uh, mentally. It was difficult. Uh, just I would keep 
flashing back to the first time and how difficult and painful and challenging it was and thinking like, how am I even going to get through this uh, again? So um, with all that being said, um, I, at that time, uh, I, I also want to mention this. Uh, I did see a therapist um, right after my first uh, surgery when I was kind of having um, those issues and also leading up to this one. Uh, I'm a firm believer in seeking help and professional help, especially I needed it. Uh, and it, I was so thankful that I did. Um, so between the first and the second, and then even after uh, the second, uh, it's something that I, I continued uh, to seek and, and really, it really helped me. Uh, but for the second one, uh, obviously it was uh, a success. Uh, it actually wasn't as, as painful. Um, it was a much better experience, to be honest. Um, and yeah, I was really happy to see the, uh, the other side, I guess. Um, and yeah, that was, I guess I'm 29 now. So that was 10 years ago. Um, in the time since I, um, got into, got into sales, uh, and kind of worked my way all the way up, worked, lived in different places across the country. Uh, I'm originally from Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, I lived in Fort Collins, Colorado. I lived in Denver. I lived in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Now I find myself in Buffalo, New York. Um, and it's just been, I've been able to, you know, be happy and be, I've, I've been successful and I can't tell you looking back and talking to that 19 year old kid, 18 year old kid, uh, Hey, it's going to be okay. You're going to be able to, to fight through this and see the other side. I wouldn't have believed it to be honest with you. That's how kind of bad my, my mental state was. And, uh, it's still to this day, uh, it comes up. I think about it. Um, it's something I work through with and talk to my therapist about, uh, and my friends. And, you know, it's something that I constantly think about. I actually did have a scare, um, a few uh, months back um, where I was getting chest, chest pain. It just turned out to be anxiety because honestly, I was like, I, third time? No way. I can't do it. Um, so that was um, that was challenging, but I was able to get through that. And, and now I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I have a really positive outlook on things, uh, especially after the second one, because in my mind, every day that I, that I am here is truly, um, it's, it's incredible. I think everyone, every single one's a gift. Uh, and I try and live my life that way. And it's really helped me, uh, to succeed and be successful, um, with relationships, with work, uh, with life. So, um, just, I guess in, in recap, um, and I work for a, a startup called kangaroo time. I mean, how fun is that? It's terrific. Um, <laughs> And I just, I love what I do and I'm really, I'm just happy to be here. So I guess any advice to anyone that's, that's watching this or that may have to go through, um, that sort of surgery, um, it's going to be okay. Trust, you know, trust in yourself and the support system around you, um, and, and seek, seek help, whether that's from the community, um, here or whether that's from, uh, a professional, don't be afraid to go out and, and seek that help and, and get, and, get through it from a mental perspective. Obviously the physical side is, is difficult too, but make sure to always keep in mind, like, you know, you're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. And if you need to, to seek help, you know, you should, and, and there, it's really nothing to be, to be ashamed of. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of my story. And thanks so much for, for listening. I appreciate it.